Hello there, I'm Andy Warren, the Senior Collections Manager at the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera and Biodiversity at the Florida Museum of Natural History here at the University of Florida. I'm here today to talk to you about some of my favorite butterflies. They're skipper butterflies. It's called the Yucca Giant Skipper, Megathymus yucky. It's one of the world's largest skipper butterflies. It occurs from coast to coast in the United States and shows a high degree of geographic variation. It's highly variable. There's 10 described subspecies across the continent as you go from coast to coast. For example, this is the typical subspecies from Georgia. And you notice how large they are, how dark the coloration is, how sort of a deep orange these spots on the forewings are. As you move across the continent, they get smaller. Here's some from Nebraska. This is Megathymus yucky coloridensis. Notice how much smaller these are. You can actually fit four per row in this unit tray. And it extends all the way over to California. Here's some females from Los Angeles County. So it gives you an idea for the geographic variation. Now, these are very unique skippers. Unlike almost all other skippers that build leaf shelters on their larval food plants, the giant yucca skipper larvae they bore right down into the stalk or the root of their yucca food plant. If it's a small plant, they may actually kill the plant. If it's a large plant, the plant survives but is unhappy for a year or two. Um, as a result, the larvae of these skippers are rather unlike other skipper larvae in their morphology. They don't have the constricted neck as, uh, that other skippers have. And they're also very rarely seen because you have to actually go inside the plant excavate the larva out of the plant to even see where the larva is at. So given that these adults are very rarely seen, the best way to find this skipper butterfly is to actually find the feeding tubes and excavate the larva out of the feeding tube. So why don't we go outside and see if we can find a yucca skipper larva inside a yucca plant and uh, perhaps I'll get to show you this process in person. Got something special for you today. These are stalks of yucca aloa folia, also called the Spanish bayonet, which is one of two local food plants for the yucca giant skipper, Megathymus yucky. This yucca may or may not be native to Florida, but the giant yucca skipper, the yucca giant skipper, has adapted to use this plant without any problems. So this yucca stalk is much larger yucca stalk than the last one. And this really shows quite clearly the life cycle the stages of the yucca giant skipper caterpillar. So the egg is laid up here. This used to be the rosette of new growth coming out of the center of the plant. The egg is laid on the tender new vegetation and the young caterpillar larva makes a nest. He spins these, these leaves together and makes a nest typical of, all other, of most other skipper nests. It's not much different at that point. But as the caterpillar gets bigger, he moves down this rosette of leaves and then actually burrows right into the stalk of the plant. So what you see here is old damage and this then is the feeding tube right here coming out of the center of the plant. So to avoid poking myself in the eye and um, potential disaster here, we're going to trim this up a little bit. I like to break off small sections at a time, aided by a little cut here. So we'll start right about here. Bust it. Nothing yet. So we save this chunk. That'll make a plant. Move up a little further. Make a cut. Break it. Nothing yet. There's another plant. It's still right about here. Aha! There's the bottom of the tunnel. So now our work is almost done. You can see this is right towards the very bottom. It just narrows down to a point on this side. So he's not in there. So. 
Now let's go ahead and open the top of the feeding tube. Now when you find one of these little tubes on the top of a yucca, and they're always going to be coming right out of the center where the new growth was coming out, to see if it's an active tube from this year, open it just a little bit on top, and what you should see is white powder. So you see when I, when I tear this open just a little bit, you see the white powder, which means it's an actively occupied tube, that there's something alive down in here. I like to do it basically into three strips. And you see the white powder coming out. We don't know exactly what the white powder is. It's apparently an anti-desiccant. It probably also works as an insecticide to keep intruders out of the tunnel. Trim this a little bit. good enough and you just simply blow them out of the tunnel here's the larva now what I need is a fearless volunteer to catch whatever comes flying out of here Elena Ortiz thank you for volunteering So, just cup your hands. Now, don't get poked by these leaves. Cup your hands. How close should I? Go right underneath it, so there's no chance of it not falling into your hands. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Is it out? Yeah. There it is. Another caterpillar. So again, they're done feeding. They're just sort of waiting a couple more days or weeks before they pupate. And uh, then about a month later, we'll have the adult skipper come out. Welcome back to the collections at the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera and Biodiversity. Hope you enjoyed our field trip out back. Uh, we were really lucky to be able to find some giant yucca skippers this morning and uh, show you the process of extracting the larvae from the yucca tubes. Now I was going to show you some specimens that I collected last year. So you'll notice these specimens here, each one has the old pupil shell pinned next to it. Now. Adults of this species are almost never seen in nature. They're very, very short-lived because they don't feed as adults. Their proboscis, which is basically the butterfly tongue, is reduced so far that it's not even functional uh, in this species. So all of their energy as an adult comes from larval food plant resources that they stored up um, several months before. And as you'll see here, these are males on this side females on this side, there's quite a size difference. The males are smaller with pointier forewings, whereas the females are larger with much, much rounder forewings. So this, these specimens then form part of our research collections. We're studying the geographic variation of this species as you move across the continent. So these are all from the local area um, within an hour's drive of Gainesville, Florida from the 2013 season. So I hope you've enjoyed this little brief look into the life cycle and life history of the yucca giant skipper. And just to whet your appetite, there is one more species of yucca skipper in Florida. That's the Kofakwe skipper. Here's three males and two females of those, which have a very different life cycle, which we're going to save and tell you about in a future episode. So thanks a lot for joining us.